State Department defends labeling lab leak foreign disinformation, flagging tweets on subject. Uh, I mean, I can't believe they're still pushing this narrative that is for, is for the lab leak theory is foreign disinformation when when they um, our own uh, government have done research into this and said it is a possibility. Even Dr. Fauci admit that it's a possibility, but the, yet the State Department is still pushing the narrative that is is disinformation. Um, but before we get started, go ahead and hit that like button. Share this out so we can get this information out there. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and hit that alarm bell so you know when I'm putting out new stuff. Also, check out my link tree in the description. It has a link to my Patreon where I talk about things I can't talk about here. There's also a link to my Instagram um, and my merch store where I have I Will Not Comply t-shirts um, as well. All right, let's talk about this news. The State Department on Thursday denied asking Twitter to censor certain posts and accounts due to being, quote, foreign disinformation after internal Twitter communications revealed the department reportedly flagged some tweets as problematic for Twitter staff. I mean, we got the receipts. We've seen the receipts. I mean, so how can they still come out and lie and say that they weren't uh, censoring people? I mean, just lies on top of lies. This is our government at work. But in the latest batch of the Twitter files published by journalist Matt Taibbi, documents purportedly show that the Global Engagement Center, GEC, an office within the State Department, was working with Twitter to identify certain posts and accounts spreading alleged disinformation on behalf of foreign governments. During a press briefing Thursday, State Department spokesman Ned Price denied that this has been done for the purpose of censorship insisting it was simply an informative service for Twitter and meant to protect American interests. Quote, I will say that I just want to correct the mischaracterization, Price said in response to the question about the report. Quote, the purported Twitter email you cite clearly states the GEC provided a list of Twitter accounts with links to Russian source, sources of propaganda for Twitter's situational awareness and there was no action request that the GEC purportedly made of Twitter in that email. Quote, the GEC does not attempt to moderate content on social media platforms. Its role is to identify foreign disinformation narratives, trends, and techniques that are aimed at undercutting U.S. national interests, he continued. Price referenced a GEC report issued in early 2020 which identifies certain alleged disinformation narratives about COVID-19 coming from foreign governments, particularly Russia. One of those narratives speculated the virus may have emerged from a lab in Wuhan, China, or otherwise could be related to bat research in the region. Price did not directly answer the question of whether the State Department still considers the narrative to be disinformation. Because we know we have mountain evidence to <laughs> to show that it's not disinformation. This did not come from Russia. Uh, this came from research. I mean, I've covered it since its inception of that theory. But Price also responded to a question about the purpose behind flagging certain posts for Twitter, if not to have them removed. Quote, well, this goes back to the GEC's role, and its very role is to identify those disinformation narratives, he said. Quote, social media platforms have their own terms of service. Social media companies want to be in a position to enforce their own terms of service. It's not up for us to decide what a company must or should do. But when we see something that may have a foreign disinformation nexus aimed at undermining U.S. national interests, it would be negligent not to flag that for a social media platform and to allow them to then determine whether, pursuant to their own terms of service, any actions should or should not be taken. But it's a private entity. Why would you? Why would you? Why would you do this in the first place? I mean, he's he's just lying. He knows this is for censorship. That's the whole reason what GEC is there for is to censor our thoughts. But regarding whether or not speculation about the COVID, um, the origins of COVID nineteen in China was still considered disinformation, Price simply claimed. It was a narrative pushed by the Kremlin. Again, we got no proof that it was pushed by the Kremlin. But, quote, what the report notes is the notion that these narratives were being pushed by elements of the Kremlin, of the Russian 
Federation, he said, this information that has a foreign government or foreign nexus is of concern to the GEC, but more broadly, it's of concern to the United States when the intent is to undermine U.S. national interest. So my thing is, we know that Russia and, and China are allies. So why would Russia create disinformation about um, 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 COVID coming from a lab of their own allies? That makes no sense on the face of it. So what? Uh, so why would you? Why would you say it's Russian disinformation? Uh, uh, I mean, I mean, this this is this the whole thing. The whole thing makes no sense. Um, um, it makes no sense. Why would the Why would the State Department be caping for China and believing that we're, um, even though we have evidence saying showing that um, the lab is, is a possible lab leak? So my so who in government is owned by the Chinese? So it looks like our State Department is bought and paid for by uh, the Chinese government, just like um, um, Biden. We know Biden is bought and paid for by the Chinese government. That's why they have to say this lab leak theory is, is um, Russian disinformation to cape for China. But let me know what you think. Leave your comments down below. Like, share, and subscribe, and check out democrepublics.com for the latest in news. Until next time, peace. Oh,